everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, Darcy. How are you doing? Hi, Naima. Good to see you. Good to see you, everybody. Welcome to Awaken Positive Power, where we talk about depression, mental health awareness, and suicide prevention. Wonderful to have you here again, and we hope that we can become part of your family in terms of just making, normalizing this conversation around these topics. Um, we're coming from a point of view from friendship and personal experience. Um, so just trying to, I don't know, make sure it's okay for us to have a conversation without it being shunned or afraid to open our mind, open our mouths up, our mind, our worlds up to this um, thing that's really, I think, really common amongst all of us. Um, we're here also to give tools and guide um, to healing, uh, some techniques and things that we may be able to help each other out. Um, and some pretty heavy topics, obviously, guys. So um, yeah, I think we just, just, just enjoy, just enjoy. I don't know if that's the right word, but just yeah, sit down. It is. It's Sunday. always nice to have a nice big conversation about big, difficult subjects in a supported and loving setting. And here exactly we are talking about, right? <laughs> Healing, love, and how do we get through all the weirdness about being human? Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. And today we have amazing couple, which actually I'm live now. First time I've been live with our, with our um, guests. And here I am in Colorado, and we have Shiloh Keller and Basira Kroll from Vibrant Life Farms. Yay! The lovely ladies Yay. here. Nice to meet you, you guys. Thank, Thank you so you. much. And we've got a pretty heavy topic today, guys. We've got um, Basira was diagnosed with cancer about eight years ago, and oh. Shiloh has been diagnosed with cancer about three months ago. And we're here to um, open the conversation about how they've sort of coped with these heavy um, experience of life that has handed them. Um, they're both inspirations to me. I've only just met Basira, but as a couple, they're beautiful and their energy is amazing and they're survivors all the way. And I'm already going to cry. Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty inspiring stuff. So anyway, thank you guys for being here. Yeah. Um, so let's hand it over to you guys. Yeah, it's just, it's really tough. And I just think it's amazing. And you thank you so much for sharing your conversation with, these, with us, let alone anybody else out there. Um, just hope that the best for you. I really do. You're beautiful spirits. Thank you. So I hate to sort of say, like, just let's cut this beginning, you know, the, the story short. <laughs> <laughs> Jemima. The sort of outline of your stories and then how you're dealing with your events of life that has, yes. ha life has handed you, I should say. Yeah. yeah. You can start. <laughs> okay, I'll start. Um, my name is Shiloh, and I have been uh, recently diagnosed with stage three lung cancer, and um, that happened back in March of 2021. And so it's been really pretty new and full of what is the biggest emotional roller coaster of my life. And it has had lots of lots of emotional experiences deep crevices of dark thoughts and not feeling very connected to the world that i lived in and not wanting to be sick and all of these things and it's it's been really hard and i have been blessed with an amazing partner who is sitting beside me now who has been just yeah, really blessed with this partner because she's been accepting and loving and holding me even in my darkest places and never judging and always lifting me to the place that she sees me in, mm -hmm. which is really the biggest gift ever. Right. Right. And I, I have no idea what I'd do without her. It, I would probably be dead already if I didn't have that kind of support. Mm -hmm. And when I was first diagnosed, my wife is an accountant and it was in the middle of tax season and that, well, I, I don't know if anybody knows anything about tax season, but it went all the way to May this year and things have been nuts. And so our lives were nuts and I held this in my heart without sharing it with anybody for months. And it was really dark times. And I did a lot of journaling. I did a lot of going out into nature and crying and 
yelling and I'm a very physical person. So like when I have really strong emotions, I have to physically get them out of my body or they cause more disease. And that's kind of what in many ways my disease is my cancer is parts of my emotional self that I have not dealt with or that I have not like really let go of or held resentments in or held hurts that were valid but never really gave myself the chance to break those patterns and be a different person and so there was lots of that experience and I have incorporated again a, a gift to know people that are gifted in healing mm. practices that are outside of the western medicine and so I have a cranial sacral healing healer that I work with I have a mm. spiritual guide this I mean it's energy medicine energy medicine yes that would be a better way to say to sum up what she does energy medicine that I've been working with her for the last three months and doing some really deep work and looking at some really deep parts of myself and seeing how I could be so angry and vengeful and also loving and forgiving in the same breath and being really confused on how to reconcile that because how could I be want forgiveness and want to forgive others and then want to do psychopathic things to <laughs> other people <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and right I know it sounds crazy but I mean and really I I want to recognize that I probably am fucking crazy <laughs> and <laughs> but I have you know like I don't act on those psychopathic instincts or desires and and you know like bringing light to them has enabled me to disempower them yes and that, well, that proves right there that you are not crazy <laughs> there you go. So that's you, that's the proof that you okay, are looking you for. So. <laughs> that's so you know. That's what you were looking for. There it is. Yeah. Well. Okay. <laughs> but and in and often in this process, have I felt crazy? Sure. Often in this process, and I'm still very much going through the process. Yeah. Like I still wake up with this horrible cough sometimes that really brings my mortality yeah. face to face. Like, and, and it's scary and, you know, and I don't want to be sick. And so, you know, like there's all of these different sides of the same hexagonal dice mm. that has like so many dimensions that I can't even keep up. Mm. And, and it's all in, spin you know and mm -hmm. everything is different moment to moment to moment to moment yeah. and it's been you know a crazy ride but i think part of my path in this world in this lifetime is to be real mm -hmm. and to fully feel whatever comes and try to be a better person because I don't know, I was just, I had that inner drive to always want to be better and knowing that we are all imperfect. And if we can just rise above our trials and tribulations, there's peace. There's, you know, there's that like understanding that everything is perfect in the world. And I've always wanted to ascend to that. So I always push myself to that next question for myself. But, yeah. and not, not everybody does that. And, yeah. and nor do you have to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I choose a more intense life in asking <laughs> myself those questions, <clears throat> but it's, it's been incredibly eye opening. It's been, it's been a realization that the emotional stuff that I have buried and the psychopathic 
thoughts and feelings that come from the wounded child mm -hmm. that, you know, was molested six, 10, raped at 16, raped at 21, you know, like those experiences turned into a portion of me being a psychopath. Mm -hmm. And I'm not gonna, you know, like there as my way of to try to cope for, yeah. with that victim. Mm -hmm. And I never of course acted on any of those things, but, and I always tried to keep that part of me really very deeply because again, you're not supposed to think those things about people. You're not supposed to think those things about people. Only in the movies and Charles Manson <laughs> think things like I was thinking. Yeah. So in keeping those things quiet and not giving that part of me air in continuing to harbor device, I mean, vices like smoking cigarettes and mm -hmm. smoking weed and doing all of these things that continued to diminish my lung capacity and not caring because this was the way I was dealing with those emotional sure. traumas. Yeah. yeah. And it was working and it was fine. And I smoked from 13 to now 48 mm -hmm. and, and smoked a whole lot of other things in between. And <laughs> so like, yeah, so it just came more and more clear that I wasn't dealing with a lot of emotional stuff. And that as I crested a a mountain and being super depressed and then finding my way to the other side of wanting to stay on this planet longer and wanting to build, you know, an after this, try to get healthy instead of like, you know, blaze of glory, which has really been a life story for me. Like if I was going to get sick, I was going to go out in a blaze of glory because that's the way I wanted to go. <laughs> And that has been my story forever. It really has been my story forever. And now that I'm actually faced with, you know, like here, what are you going to do? I'm choosing a different path and I'm choosing to dive deep into the darkness and accept those parts and then say, it's okay that you were there. You were protecting me and now I can let you go. And right. be in that place of actually like, fully releasing it from not only my body, but my energetic pattern. And that was a big, big step for me. Congratulations. That's, Thank you. That's amazing. I mean, the, that kind of understanding, just your beautiful understanding of your process is so impressive and so inspiring. You know, and you're right, because a lot of times when people um, have suffered the way you've suffered, we do get self-destructive and want to go out in a blaze of glory and take everybody with us along the way. Mm -hmm. And for you to say, turn it around and say, no, I really need to heal myself. It, it's such a demonstration of, of self-love yeah. and self-forgiveness that you are willing to treat yourself so kindly and so gently when you could just as easily go in the opposite direction. I, I think that that's so remarkable that you've discovered that self-love and that self-forgiveness. And I always say, you know, the shadow, our shadow, our darkest part of ourselves is where our power is. And when we go and get face to face with it, we find how powerful we really are. And then when we forgive ourselves, not forgive other people, but forgive ourselves for carrying our anger and carrying our hurt and deciding that we forgot to love ourselves somewhere. That's just so powerful. So I'm just so amazed by you. Mm, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Really. I'm really blessed. And most, what motivated me most to get to this point yeah. is to believe in reincarnation. Mm -hmm. And 
I'm pretty clear that in my next lifetime, I don't want any of the shit that I'm carrying in this one. <laughs> I don't want I don't want any of my shit to follow me here. Like, let's get it out of the way. Let's deal with it. Let's be done. Ascension. Yeah. We're yeah. going for ascension. <laughs> Yeah, and that's why like being truthful and being honest with yourself, right? That's right. what how it happens. That, yeah, to be really present and be really in this moment now, right? To be really present right here is how you do it. Um, so with your heel, I have a question for. Her. Hang on one sec. Is when you're working with your healers, do they give you specific homework and tasks? Do you have a practice that you're practicing? Um, they give reflection. Uh, the cranial sacral, no, there's no homework. She just right. magically, energetically balances me. She's magic. It's awesome. Um, yeah. But the uh, the energetic healer, she does give me tasks. She does, you know, and then, you know, like she gives me more feedback and then she kind of lets me direct it. Mm -hmm. And because I'm on this path of ascension of sorts, you know, like I've been thinking about it through the week and, you know, like, and I'm like, okay, this is kind of what's been coming up for me. And then we do a session kind of like to deal with that. I know. Many things happen. Yeah. Lots of journaling and neuro-linguistic programming mm -hmm. uh, practices and being present. It's been moment. really awesome. She's been really fantastic. Wonderful. What what I think is crazy though, guys, is when we hear story is that you have been diagnosed it's eight to ten years ago. Eight years ago. Yeah, eight years mm -hmm. ago. And that you as a couple, um, first I like to hear your story too, Pasira, but also how like you're able to help with your experience, dare I say that, of healing for someone so newly diagnosed with cancer and that you are lovers and love each other so dearly. And how's that working for you and how it's not working for you? I mean, that must create sort of a love such a I don't know concern but a different element to your relationship um so can you just give us a brief rundown of how your, your story sure. story per se yeah we'll you want my story and then come back to yeah, this topic yeah, yeah, okay totally. all right um I had kind of a crazy childhood I spent all of my life trying to figure out what was wrong with me mm -hmm. and when Shiloh came into my life I had been a single mom of three kids and I was really my goal was graduation. Can we get them graduated? Can I stay alive long enough for that? Mm -hmm. I don't know what's wrong with me and I don't have health insurance. So <laughs> Shiloh, on the other hand, wanted me to like take some action. And I did know I was growing something in my neck. Uh, so I went down a sorted path, ended up at NIH. They said radiation might work. Radiation made things grow mm -hmm. and get even more out of control. And mm -hmm. At that point, they clarified that it's neuroendocrine cancer and that they could do surgery and I was guaranteed to be paralyzed. Oh Not sure how much, or at least I should move to sea level. And I live at 5,000 feet in Colorado. I was born and raised here and I'm on a family property and I don't really wanna move. But <laughs> I did start squirreling a little bit of money away for moving to sea level. Um, once I kind of got that news and tumors got worse from radiation, I came home, I, I had been, I would got really into Joe Dispenza and other like quantum energy medicine. So I'm actively every day working on myself. I also decide that I should figure out how to heal with manual labor. I also get into a, a hyperbaric oxygen therapy system where I was in three to five times a week for a couple of years. I was getting IV ozone. I did uh, infrared, infrared saunas every day for years. Um, and then at some point the IV stopped. I couldn't do the ozone anymore. Um, and I ended up on oxygen full time for a couple of years getting worse and worse while I was trying to work harder on a farm <laughs> and <laughs> chase goats around and, um, and really got to the end of my life and was no longer answering phones and responding to people, just getting my business, like making the money so my family was safe. 
And that was all I had to give. And a friend introduced me to a medical device. I brought that into my life and it changed my world. Um, within a couple of months, I was off oxygen. Um, and now I think it's four years later and have reclaimed most of my life. Um, during this time, it's, it's long and, and I have a son who's diabetic as well. So I've gotten into life or death experiences and starting with him i really didn't feel okay leaving the hospital and giving him insulin against his will i had to find some comfort with that as a mom who had to chase her kid around every time he had to eat mm -hmm. i had to poke him twice <laughs> he would cry and he was four yeah. um yeah. and the thing that i brought into my life then that has stayed with me is everything is god we are all one, everything, even the insulin. And, and once I shifted that mindset that this too is God, whatever is in front of me, whether I feel like I like it or hate it, this too is God. I changed that patterning inside of me really clearly and proceeded forward into that experience with him. That definitely was brought back with the oxygen and the hyperbaric mm -hmm. chambers and the IV ozones and all the stuff that I was just trying to get my kids graduated. This is my goal. <laughs> well, that's, um, so noble. that's so noble, by the way. <laughs> so I have a very do personality. I, I like to be actively involved. I'm not a victim. I know I'm here creating this experience. I don't know what the hell is here for me to get from it, but I better figure it out. So I went through endless amounts of meditation processes, natural healing. I've always eaten really well, but I did even better. Um, and a lot of what I call mindfulness, like here in this exact moment, am I okay? And where's the vibration that I can reach in this exact moment? Like letting go of yesterday, letting go of tomorrow, just this present moment. Um, so now I'm, I'm pretty highly functional. I don't, I'm off of oxygen. I'm off of CPAP. I don't use a hyperbaric chamber. I don't do the infrared saunas. I eat whatever I want. And, um, I would love to have a little more energy, but you know, I complain about that rather than I can't stand up today or I can't breathe. <laughs> so my complaints are are minuscule nowadays. That's great. And, That's amazing. It's, so, it's a fucking miracle. I'm not even yeah, going to lie. Yeah. Both of you, both of you like the miracles in terms of recovery and your attitudes towards recovery and the shift you've had to change from the bitterness and the fuck the world, pardon YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like to then go, okay, we've got to grab it. All. God is everything and how you switch your life around. Like, it's amazing. So inspirational. So it's an inspiration. Mm -hmm. I really feel. Well, and it took the darkest night. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I'm not going to even lie. Like, it took for each and every one of us. I mean, she was going through that and I was her support in that. And that was really hard. Mm -hmm. And ironically, now we're back to the other side and she is healthy and is needing to be my support. Mm -hmm. And one of us has to get through the darkest night before they can say, wait, yeah. in this moment, what do you choose? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what we had to both get to. And trust me, we ran cycles for years slash months you know like yeah. we running our like ah yeah. this is fuck yeah. this is messed up and this is you know like and i'm a victim and whatever yeah. right but we had to get to that like what choose what do you choose now yeah How yeah do you choose what, and it, do we have now? anything but now yeah exactly. is there anything else but now and that's what we both ended up having to come to is the here and the now and then you know like and to those people out there that are like well my here and now and nobody cares or my here and now and i don't have that support system the truth of the matter is is that support system might not be somebody you know and love yet but they are right around the corner they are one phone call away 
they are, reach out and see who shows up for you because the at least for Basir and I, we believe that the universe is on our side. <laughs> Beautiful. Right. right. That's a huge revelation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The universe is on our side. And if we open to that truth and be present, the gifts will come. They yeah. will come. They will come and they will come. That is what I know. How are you guys working this as a couple? You know, like, as I said before, the irony that you've both been through it and now, as you said, the switch roles of, of healer and helper, um, of, you know, it's, how is this affecting your relationship and how does it work for your benefit and not hurt us? It's a loaded question, I know. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, I'm grateful that in my process, I have come into a relationship with cancer that, you know, I can no longer feel tumors. I, I, I can't, I've not gone to the doctor to verify they're gone, but I can't find them. And I could before. Um, mm. I came into a relationship with cancer that I, there's no fear involved there for me. Mm. So coming into this situation with Shiloh, I'm holding a different mm. ground than a lot of people where I'm not mm. afraid of cancer. It has mm. something to give you. And let's find out what that is, whatever it takes. And I'm not afraid of your darkness. I accept you. I know that wow, all this yeah. is, yeah. all this is, is God. Like we're here and everything here has importance. So, and at the same time, you know, I'm still living in a relationship with some cells in my body that get out of control. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> if I get stressed out, they make a bunch of noise <laughs> and I don't really like those symptoms. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting my own body feedback as to, oh my gosh, I'm doing too much. We have to find a different solution mm -hmm. for this. I cannot stress out about mowing. I need to pay someone to mow <laughs> or whatever it is. Like day to day, my body is giving me feedback mm -hmm. that you are pushing this line too far. Mm -hmm. And so I guess it was, it's tuned me in to, more to myself mm -hmm. and I provide like the most loving space that I can for everybody, everybody, for everybody that she comes in contact with. Yeah, it's totally. true. She does. Definitely. I bet. I bet you must just have that effect on everybody that you meet. Can I ask you a question? Oh my gosh, you guys are so fun and cute. <laughs> over here, wait. Here I am. <laughs> I love you. Um, can I ask you guys how have the kids dealt with this, and how have you helped the kids deal with this? Because I would assume that as you are being affected, they are being affected, and then you're going to have to help them process their big feelings, but, you know, they were pretty young when this started for you. That was eight years ago. So to help them understand and find their own process and their own understanding of what's happening to you. Um, can you give us a little insight on being a mom and being, yeah, being moms, both of you being moms? Yeah. Good question. It is a good question. And what I learned is that you don't get much of a memory when you're super sick. Um, so I was barely present for the kids while I was sick and Shiloh took over parenting as a mom okay. and their father didn't take them any extra. He wasn't very supportive because his wife was also diagnosed with breast cancer. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. She has not done so well. She's gone down the Western medicine path and, you know, she's still alive, but it's been rough and it continues to be rough for her. Um, so a lot fell on Shiloh and <laughs> the kids rebelled a lot with that because- Yeah, they did. Because <laughs> I'm a step parent <laughs> and step parents have no power, okay? Yeah. Step parents have no power, especially yeah. if both parents are participating. Yeah. So- there's a lot of absence that happened while I was sick, honestly. And I'm sad for that as I look back. And I really didn't become clear about that until my brain started clearing a couple years after the Beamer came into my life. And 
I really started, my mental health really started shifting again mm -hmm. um, and coming back. And I realize a lot of trauma, but a lot of trauma that's sort of hidden because kids are so adaptable yeah. and they really are more present in the moment than we are. And they're just moving and changing every day to adapt. And they don't really think about the why right now. It's going to come later. <laughs> right. So, um, you know, now looking back and now dealing with Shiloh's um, health, you know, they each have their own. My middle son is very worried and he asks about her all the time. And, you know, we've had open conversations and Shiloh is getting more vulnerable with the kids where instead of just being frustrated with their behavior, she'll open up. If they're triggering her, she'll share. And hard work. <laughs> so I think they're learning a lot. I think they have yet to begin to process what it's been like for them yeah. to have every mother figure in their life dealing with cancer. With cancer. Yeah. And, yeah. and there are different ways that we're all dealing with it. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask, um, you mentioned something about a Beamer. Mm -hmm. Could you elaborate? Sure. Uh, Beamer is a medical device that was developed in Germany about 21 years ago to support the elderly population with blood circulation. Mm -hmm. And somewhere in the fa past five or six years, it came to the United States and it increases blood circulation at the capillary level by 30%. It increases oxygen and nutrient delivery and waste removal. And when you clean up yeah. at the cellular level, wow. everything changes. Like when yeah. you change the environment, yeah your cells begin to make different decisions. Mm -hmm. And so when you span that out over time, amazing healing can happen. Okay. Um, wow. It's been a huge gift. I took the money I was saving for sea level and bought it because go. it was a little How expensive. How did you find out about it? Like, why, why don't we know about this? Um, my friend shared it with me from okay. Denver and he was hesitant to share it. Mm -hmm. He didn't really know if it would help. And it's pretty new. Um, yeah, yeah. It's so an the FDA, yeah, yeah, FDA class two medical device. Okay. You know, part of the reason is our country is very funded by pharmaceuticals. Yeah. Really? This is uh, this is something that can eliminate pharmaceuticals from yeah. your life, yeah. almost wow. entirely for many, entirely for many people, and then almost entirely for the others. Has it worked for you, Charlotte? As well? Oh my God, I love this machine. It wow. is, I wow. mean, it's like amazing. it's it works for everybody, whether you have an ailment or not. Okay. like superstar athletes are using this device to get better performance it's just an amazing machine and just it stimulates blood circulation 30 percent who doesn't want to live a 30 percent better life how do you use it like how does it you lay on it it's a bioelectromagnetic pulse that goes through mm -hmm. this mat that goes through then that pulse goes through your body and it reminds your body of its natural rhythm Mm -hmm. of sorts and that rhythm stimulates the micro circulatory system which actually moves 70 wow. percent of your blood like wow. your heart Amazing. only moves 30 percent of your blood and then your micro circulation moves 70 percent mm -hmm. and it doesn't have anything to do with your heart it is everything to do with like a rhythm that the earth gives you by its electromagnetic pulse it's, mm -hmm. it's incredible science yeah, it's totally. it's really an amazing device. So it came into our lives. I started to use it. Well, she used it first, and then she convinced me to start using it. And yeah, now I don't go anywhere without it. It's an amazing machine, and you really just lay on it eight minutes twice a day, and wow. it changed our lives. It, yeah. I mean, both of ours. And now, as I'm dealing with cancer, like I'm using it, you know, more intentionally to support my lungs and to support, you know, like my digestion and all of these things that, you know, at 48, you know, kind of ha might have some problems, you know? <laughs> Hush. So, you know, I mean, like this device is, is, is incredible. So yeah, who knows where we'd be without it, but probably not here today. Wow. Another wow. thing was that I was hearing was um, right at the beginning when we started talking, Charlotte, particularly yourself was about the support and Darcy, you and I are here to be that support with these conversations and how important support is to heal with anything. Um, 
how do you support each other? Like, what's your sort of, what, what do you do in terms of supporting each other through this crisis? Dare lots I say? of talking. Yeah. Lots of talking and lots. I mean, so for me, I'm a runner. Okay. I get scared and I want to run. It's just the way I've always been. It's been a coping mechanism my whole life. And I am trying to overcome that experience. So I often, when I have really big emotions or really big feelings or really big vulnerable experiences, I close that shit up and I lock it tight and nobody is to see me in that kind of vulnerable situation. So this era has been continuing, continuously telling me, you know, like, I'm here for you. I won't judge you. I'm going to, you know, like wherever, just, you know, you've got something to share and she becomes absolutely present and, you know, and so then I let go and I share and, you know, I, we're on the deck and I'm like, I am struggling because I can't do the work I used to do just three months ago, you know, like, and that's a physical experience that I'm having. And it scares me. And that, you know, like, and she just holds me and just, you know, like is giving me her undivided attention. And, and like, I understand. And, oh my gosh, like what a gift, yeah. what yeah. an amazing gift to be held in that. And to just, and then to let it out, you yeah. know, because like wow. that feeling is, a, is a valid feeling mm -hmm. and but one that I am ashamed of because I'm operating at a less productive pace and she beautifully offers her attention and says, it's okay. I love you. We're going to get through this. Yeah. What a gift. What a gift. I mean, like, I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. Right. And so I don't know what I did to deserve such an amazing partner, but whatever it was, yay me. She had cancer as well, you know, like when she was going through it and I was being her support and having to step up and be a mom, which I had never done and was clear in my lifetime that I didn't really want to ever make babies and then I fell in love with the woman with three children. So, you know, like, the you know, universe has got a great sense of humor. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> and, you know, and it was that same communication, that same open communication and that same, I love you, even in your most vulnerable place. I lift you to the person I know you to be. That was what saved us. Yeah. Wow. That's a remarkable thing. And ladies, um, what about for your future? Like what, what sort of you taking? Yeah. 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 What's, what's so, happening in the future? So <laughs> Sarah and I are incredibly powerful manifestors. We have manifested, like pulled dreams that were bigger than life. And in seven years of manifesting to reality, like we can manifest whatever we want. Wow. So this year I have taken on, my personal desire is to manifest independent wealth for my family. Beautiful. So in the next 12 to 14 months, I am going to manifest independent wealth for my family Beautiful. where we don't have to work for anybody ever again. Can I be part of your family? <laughs> <laughs> you already are. Yeah. <laughs> you already are. So, so what about yourself? What would you say for the future? Yeah. Uh, I am really grateful for every day. Um, I am very focused on staying present and trying to create from a space of loving acceptance and spreading that energy into the world and with a, no attachment to what the future looks like, but a clarity of energy. Mm. And I don't have any idea what the future looks like, but I'm pretty sure I know what I want it to feel like. <laughs> mm. 
So that's my most powerful place to be in. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm going to manifest the wealth <laughs> and then we're going to be wealthy. She's going to come from the good place and I'm going to come from the money. We're going to live happily ever after. It's going to be awesome. That makes perfect sense. Yes. Yeah, totally. That makes absolutely perfect sense because you know money is energy right mm -hmm. money is energy and when you shift your energy into this positive understanding of what you're putting out in the world that's what comes back to you multiplied mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so that is a beautiful balance you two and i truly believe that you are going to manifest that yeah. And you know, you don't always have to have that visual, but if you work from a place of feeling, that's just as powerful. You know, I know that what, the most what powerful, I'm, the manifestation. Right? Yeah, the, actually, that is the, 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 the gas yeah. that makes anything go is from your heart. If it doesn't come from your heart, then don't even bother. Right. Absolutely. So if, if um, just, just sort of, if you had one thing to say to someone who was diagnosed with cancer, just separately a sentence from you each, what would be mm. something that you can take and give a sentence that you can give them, an encouraging sentence that you could give to them to give them hope? Because I know it's a shocking thing. It's shocking for just to hear friends have cancer, let alone have it yourself. So what would you, I know it's sprung upon you ladies. <laughs> so I, I understand if you like to take a moment, but it'd be great to just see from your heart what, what, is, you know, what comes out. Whoever wants to go okay. first. <laughs> drinking. <Okay. laughs> Um, Letting it flow through her, she's drinking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, I would say that, you know, this too is God and there's a gift here. If you can open up and listen and be in harmony with your body and nature, that whatever is here for you will become apparent if you open to it. It's beautiful. Yeah, that's lovely. And Shiloh? What she said. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love that. That's really a beautiful way to put it, right? Das, can I spring something on you too? Uh oh. Yeah, sure. so you, yeah. Would you be able to do a little closing meditation for us tonight? Oh, yeah. Are you guys good yeah. with that? Yeah. That would be a beautiful thing. Um, ladies, it's an honor to speak to both of you mm -hmm. and to be in your presence. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, <laughs> but it's yeah. such an inspiration and your strength as women and your strength with love and your power through life to make, to switch it into that this is, the universe is on your freaking side in the most, in one of the most traumatic times of your life to have walk that, to walk away with that is just pure inspiration and strength and power to you ladies. And I know you got this. I really do, I know you got this. Your energy and your spirit is is amazing, and I love the love between you. And you've given love to everyone. I mean, my experience here with these lovely ladies has been wonderful. Just the energy, even though it's been a strange, odd experience. We've got lives to live, you know. We kind of cross paths and things, but it just I feel like family. I feel safe, and I feel feel your mm. powerhouses. Beautiful, and your children are amazing. They're they're incredible children. I believe that. Beautiful, yeah. So um, thank you, thank you, thank you for being present here and, and helping other people and inspiring other people with your story. It's amazing. Mm, thank, thank you, you for, for allowing us the platform. Yeah. And it's been really awesome to have you here. And oh my gosh. I'm coming well, back. Bye -bye. I'm coming <laughs> <to us. laughs> Yeah, no, please come. You better come to Colorado. <laughs> Spirit, I'll tell you right now. I'm like, I'm kind of there at the moment. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you guys are such light beings, such light beings. And... You know, I mean, this is the human experience. Yes. The yes. True, this is the true essence of the human experience that we're spirits, you know, in a human body and we're given our obstacles and what we make of them. And when you make love out of difficulty, well, that yes. is the ultimate of the human experience. I and agree. You guys have a shining example of your humanness, the true yes. humanness. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Really, love truly. It really does. Love is the basis of our existence. And it's just a beautiful thing. Like, let's live it up. Love and peace to everyone. Like, seriously, I know it might sound hippie, and, but it's not. It's That's the reality of it. Like, doesn't work any other way. 
Yeah, you know, I always go back to that. It's kind of a funny thing, but when I used to teach acting classes, I used to tell my actors, if you really want to understand your character, you have to look at them from a place of love. Like, is your character looking for love? Is it a loss of love? You know, are they doing everything because they love the wrong thing? Like they love power, they love money. Do they, you know, what, where is the love in there? And then once you find that hook, you can act better. And then later as a hypnotherapist and a, you know, a spiritual counselor, or whatever you want to call me, um, person, <laughs> yeah. I, I really love the whole perspective from Louise Hay where everything truly is about, it comes down to self-love. Mm -hmm. If we manage to love ourselves as much as we love our cars and our objects, you know, if we truly understood self-love, yes. we could live a much easier life path. And then sometimes that's our karma in life is to truly learn on a cellular level our self-love. And that's what your machine is about. It's about that cellular level of self-love and so I hear you about that and I what I want to say is that to all of the people that aren't coming from a place of self-love like that are coming from a place of distaste they're like I hate myself I've done awful things mm -hmm. and to even speak of self-love seems miles and miles away from anything that they can even begin to see within themselves because often we really i really struggle yeah finding my own love for myself yeah. it's easier for me to love others it's easier for me to see or have compassion for others than to have compassion for myself so i would like to speak to those people who hear self-love and then say i have no idea what that means yeah out there yeah and say if you're looking for self-love and you hear that that's the answer my guidance is to then look outside of yourself find somebody that you don't know and exercise unconditional love and in that process, can you begin to understand how to reflect it back to yourself? Right. Wow. So don't judge others and say, hey, I don't know you, but love, they say love is going to make the things better. They say love is going to make things better. So I'm going to go ahead and love you because I want things to be better. Do it and watch it grow. That's Ooh, my goosebumps, advice. goosebumps. Yeah. There's lots of us that don't even think we can get to that self-love yeah. point. Yeah. Oh, sure. Believe me. Yes, I have been there for years until I started going, well, you know, we're all a reflection of each other, right? Yeah. We're all a reflection of each other. That's what's kind of so weird and profound about Zoom is that yeah. we're all looking yeah. back on each other. Yeah. Um, and I, I look at things like Zoom and the YouTube and I think, you know, our job now is to remind each other of how to retain our humanity. Yes. How to retain our humanity. So yeah, we reflect back to each other. So that's beautiful. That's a beautiful statement. And I hope people listening really are hearing that. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, lovely ladies. Let's get the meditation. I a nice, just a nice thank little. Cassie. Thank you, darling Jemima. Thank, thank you, both you. of you guys. I really appreciate this conversation today. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to be back again, like later on, you know, in the yeah. year, maybe or next year, and just you know, check up on you and how yeah. things going. The production that would be great. Things. Yeah, like that'd be yeah. really Or reach out to us if you have if you have a big revelation or anything yeah. you want to share. We would love to hear from you. So if we're in Florida on the beach, we can. Uh, Oh, we're down right. and say hey. <laughs> we'll be jealous. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> Isn't that the point? <laughs> exactly. Yes. You, my love. Okay, but let's um let's sit comfortably with a nice straight straight spine if you can, and see if you can put your feet on the floor. Close your eyes and just take a nice deep breath in through your nose. Easy, a small breath or a big breath, and hold it for just a beat. 
and exhale through your mouth, long and slow. And then just breathe easy through your nose in and out. And again, just let yourself breathe a little bit deeper in through your nose, just easy. And simply hold it for a beat so small and let yourself breathe out through your mouth, long and slow. And now just breathe easy for a moment. And you know, they say life is all about the exhale. Every time we exhale, we're just letting it go. But also life is about the inhale because we each deserve this clear, clean, healing breath. And breathing in easy through the nose and holding through for a beat. And exhaling one more time through the mouth, long and slow. And just breathing easy and effortlessly with each breath in and out. Easy and effortlessly, knowing that you are here now. And on the in-breath, it's I am. And on the exhale, it's here now. And on the in-breath, it's I am. And on the exhale, here now. Gently, I am. Gently, here now. I am safe. I am safe. I am supported. I am supported. I am here now. I am kind. I am compassionate. I am here now. I am loved. I am loved. Allowing the sounds to come in and go out the way the breath comes in and goes out, the way thoughts come in and go out, the way feelings come in and go out, the way discomfort, tickles, and itches come in and go out, the breath comes in and goes out, like the expansion and the contraction of the universe. Thank you, ladies, for sharing with us today. Thank you, thank you, thank you, ladies. Thank you, Darcy. Thank you. Your legend, thank you for that meditation being sprung on you again. We love you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. And all, all of us, I think, are inspirations for everyone. So, and back at you out there. Um, thank you once again. Bless mm -hmm, you. Bless mm -hmm. you. Bless you. Bless and Darcy, you, nice you. you know I love you. Take care. I'll talk to you all soon. Okay. Yep. Peace out, everyone. Oh, oh, hang on, hang on. Don't forget to oh. yeah, subscribe. <laughs> Woo -hoo! I forget all that sort of stuff. <laughs> anyway, peace out. Take care of yourselves. Bye. Bye.